You're watching In The Loop, I'm Crystal Park. Our guest today is Council Member Nancy Florine. Nancy, thanks so much for stopping by to chat with us. It's my pleasure. Uh, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Can you tell us a little, a brief history of your tenor, tenure here at the Council uh, and what prompted you to run for a seat? Well, <laughs> I, years ago, uh, I was uh, on the sidelines. Uh, I, keeping an eye on uh, local public policy. I had previously been a member of the Montgomery County Planning Board for eight years and uh, was involved in sort of local things. I was mayor of the town of Garrett Park at the time. and uh, But I did pay attention to local policy. And I have to tell you, I was increasingly annoyed with the sitting members of the county council because they kept finding ways to, to vote down the uh, construction of the inter-county connector big controversial project way back when. And uh, so I was having uh, breakfast with some friends one day and uh, like many women I needed to be kind of pushed to run for office. We'd heard that Mr. Leggett wasn't going to run again and there was an opening at, on, in the large uh, situation at the county council and they said, well, why don't you run? And I couldn't come up with a re good reason why not to. Uh, be, and particularly because of our need for infrastructure. So I. Uh, decided to put my hat in the ring. Uh, and uh, here we are. And what uh, year was that? That was 2002. So I got in very late uh, in that race. And luckily, uh, Doug Duncan was uh, campaigning for county executive at the moment. He was in charge of a slate called the End Gridlock Team. And uh, they added me to that group. And I won in that election and now I've been elected four times as an at-large member so it's been a, a great privilege to be part of, uh, of this county council. I will say it's ironic for me because at this very moment we're having a, an argument internally, we'll see how it goes, as to an um, important piece of infrastructure which is the second half of one of the roadways that was in dispute uh, 16 years ago. So it's kind of, kind of fun. What goes Full around circle. comes around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, during your time here at the Council, you've been chair of the Planning, Housing, Housing and Economic Development Committee, also known as the Fed Committee, for the past eight years. Um, in regards to your work within that committee, what accomplishments are you most proud of? Well, I think uh, I've led the Council to adopt uh, uh, plans for a good portion of Montgomery County that lead us into the future. Uh, think plans for Bethesda, uh, White Flint, uh, really, uh, the northern portions of the county as well, the North Potomac, of Shitty Grove vicinity, uh, uh, east, eastern part of the county, uh, Fairland, White Oak. So we've done a lot of uh, good work in sort of defining the fu county's future. Uh, but that's been a group effort, all of this. We've written the, rewritten the zoning code to modernize it. We've done a lot of, made a lot of uh, technical changes to to bring the county into the 21st century in terms of how it looks at itself and how it moves itself into the future. Well, as you said, you have been part of this county council for the past 16 years now. Um, is there something about serving in public office or something about Montgomery County or its residents uh, that you know now that you didn't know when you started in 2002? I'd say uh, I've thought about that a lot. You know, I think the hardest thing is really getting information out to the community about what we're doing and why they want to support it. Uh, I've learned that you have to actually kind of have to beat the bushes sometimes uh, to let uh, advocates and community members know about the importance of what's going on up here and why they want to get involved. And it's gotten increasingly difficult now in so far as we don't have the local newspapers we used to have and uh, a lot of all the uh, social media stuff kind of creates a lot of noise that kind of gets in the way, I think, of good information and helping uh, the community be engaged. Of course, we've changed a lot demographically over the years, and uh, we still have a challenge bringing our newer residents into the political arena. So it, it's been an interesting environment. Well, not just uh, new residents coming into the political arena. Well, as you know, with the upcoming elections this year, a lot of uh, council members and institutional knowledge will be leaving due to term limits and such. Um, what do you think might be the biggest loss of institutional knowledge with uh, council members leaving? And on the flip side of that, what do you think might be an advantage of having some fresh new faces here at the council? Well, 
I think uh, the loss of institutional knowledge, uh, both at the uh, ARD level and really at the staff level it's occurring now, um, is going to make things tough. Uh, it's easy to come in here as a fresh face and think that no one before you has ever thought of anything. And it turns out, actually, we've covered most of the bases on most of the issues. Uh, and so there's going to be a huge learning curve uh, for new folks. And I do hope they're going to have to learn. They need to know that they don't know things. And they have to be willing to work with staff and ask, learn how to write the, ask the right questions, uh, take some time to really learn what's going on and has been going on in this county. Because uh, I am afraid that many of the uh, candidates are very uninformed. Not that they're not uh, well-intentioned. Uh, but I know I've never seen most of them in this room. So I'm not sure how much they know about uh, how the county government functions, what it does, what it does not do. I've read some of their website postings, you know, gosh, we don't do that kind of thing, I want to say. But, you know, they'll find out if they get elected. So there's a lot uh, for them to learn. And, you know, I've been privileged to serve with smart people who are pretty thoughtful, who uh, do their homework. Uh, acquire great staff that can help them through all this, and that's what the newcomers will have to do. Do you have any theories as to why uh, newer, younger members who may not have been so politically involved are interested in running for a seat at the council? Well, this is a rare opportunity, uh, frankly, uh, apart from the tumult at the national level that has created a lot of, perhaps a lot more interest in getting involved than existed in the past. And frankly, we've had plenty of candidates in the past. But what isn't unique is because of term limits, uh, three of us cannot run again for our seats as at-large members, and one cannot run again as a district council member. And you know, it's a lot easier for in an incumbent to get reelected. Uh, than for someone to unseat that person. So, you know, the golden ring only comes around once for many people. It did for me in 2002 when I cleft. And uh, I'm sure that's the thought of the new uh, candidates, including the fact that we now have public financing, and they see that as a way to make it somewhat easier to run. I think they're finding out it isn't so easy. Um, and what they will find out if they get elected is actually it's a lot harder to govern that is to just run for office. That's the easy part. I think they will be shocked to discover all this. Nancy, <laughs> <laughs> that's a different job yeah. altogether. Uh -huh. um, you mentioned earlier that uh, when you were thinking about running, you said, uh, like many women, you had to be pushed um, to, to actually go for it. March is Women's History Month. You are a, a fierce advocate of women's issues. What advice do you have to younger females who may want to serve either in this position or uh, in other public office one day? Well, they, they really do have options. And uh, they, you know, number one is they never should give up. Uh, I started a group called Montgomery Women years ago. Uh, I did with some friends. And it's still going strong today. And it's a group really intended to mentor women, uh, help them, uh, to uh, get themselves into positions that they want to be in uh, towards elected office or on boards and commissions, uh, that sort of thing, uh, to get help women develop the skills that uh, will help them get to the next step in their lives. And so I would say, you know, look at me. I got involved. I was a PTA president. I was involved in some uh, local, advi uh, local advisory board before I became a um, member of the County Planning Commission. I was appointed to that, served that for eight years, got my feet wet, and really became grounded in county issues. Uh, there are lots of boards and uh, commissions and opportunities uh, for women uh, to become part of. And that's a great way to uh, balance uh, your private life or your professional life with community engagement. Great training uh, for dealing with the complex issues of uh, community life. Uh, and a wonderful uh, experience in terms of learning uh, leadership skills and the like. So I would certainly advise women, uh, particularly young women, to find, uh, find something that they're interested in and get engaged. I got involved <laughs> years ago because uh, I got annoyed at a building that was constructed, being constructed near my house. 
and um, filed the lawsuit and uh, actually won the case before the Maryland uh, Court of Appeals. And that introduced me to a whole new world. So you just never know. Uh, you just have to find something that you care about and um, pursue it. Nancy, one of the persisting issues for women is uh, the tricky balance between family life and work. Uh, a lot of women may feel they may not be able to jump into uh, their professional life until their children are raised. Do you think the government has any sort of um, responsibility or role in trying to ease the burden of balancing family life and professional life? Well, sure. I mean, if there's child care available, uh, that certainly makes things uh, more uh, possible. Uh, we have uh, done our best here to encourage uh, the availability of child care and pre-K uh, school and that sort of thing that will help families make a decision. But at the end of the day, it comes home to, comes down to your home life and who's in charge and who's willing to share and who's willing to give up some of their free time. Uh, to make sure all this um, gets managed. That is one of the, uh, I think, one of the biggest constraints uh, for women. So compromise is, is well, key. Well, you know, they, uh, you know, for all we've been through in terms of uh, uh, gender identity and family responsibilities, at the, it's a documented fact women end up doing uh, a more significant um, share of the housekeeping and child care and all the things that make a, uh, a family a family. Uh, that remains a, a genuine issue for people. Well, what's next for Nancy Florine after the Montgomery County Council? What's in your future? Well, you'll see. Uh, you know, I'm really proud of the time I've been here. I've done a lot on the fiscal side. I've done a lot. Uh, you know, pro re residents get a property tax credit on their property tax bill. That was me years ago. Uh, uh, we have a fiscal plan. I've created the Montgomery Business Development Corporation. I've done a lot in uh, in land use, uh, and I'm a huge advocate for transportation. So I'm going to have a hard time giving up public policy. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to um, new, a new frontier, and uh, I don't have a plan yet, so we'll just see, have to see. Well, I know you're an avid <laughs> biker. Is more biking in your future? Uh, well, you've got to keep that up, uh, and uh, I do enjoy that. So uh, my husband and I do a lot of biking and traveling, and uh, that won't stop. Uh, but we'll see. I'm sure uh, so there will be great new opportunities that present themselves as, uh, uh, at the end of my term. Well, just as you gave some advice to the incoming uh, council members the later this year, what words of advice do you have for your fellow council members that you've been serving alongside who are uh, st who might stay? Uh, well, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, there are thought uh, I'm I'm pretty sure the uh, current sitting council members will be returned, and uh, that will offer a core of stability to uh, the new group that uh, arrives. They're going to have to keep an eye on the bottom line. At the end of the day, the question is who pays for this great community? Uh, it's interesting to me, you know, and all the time I've been on the county council, uh, we have no one comes in. Well, maybe a couple of individuals come in and say, don't spend money on this or that. Everybody else wants us to spend more money on whatever it is. Sure, and we would love to do that. But the question is, what can we afford? and who is going to pay for that. Um, the issue of setting taxes and the tax rate is a very significant um, obligation of the county council. I don't think people think about that so much until they see what it translates in terms of community impact. So how you make all the moving parts work is very challenging. I know with at least a, a majority of the council that has had some experience, um, the new council will be uh, in a pretty good position to respect that, those challenges, and understand um, what the trade-offs are. It's not easy. I wish them the best of luck. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for joining us in the loop today, as well as your uh, incredible service uh, for the county residents here at Montgomery County as a council member. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> You've been watching In the Loop. Our guest today was Council Member Nancy Florine. I'm Crystal Park.